Hello everybody, welcome to today's class of the ecology for freshmen. We're gonna continue where we stopped the last time. We talked about aquatic ecosystems and now we're gonna talk about terrestrial. So we'll start right away. So terrestrial systems as, uh, as aquatic ones have their sub-regions and all you can see on the on the left side but every and each of them is determined by one thing mostly and similar to salinity in, in the aquatic ecosystems the biggest role in determining terrestrial ecosystem is played by climate when we say climate we think about temperature precipitation humidity wind speed and cloud cover and some other things but as you know, there's different climate types in, in this planet and they are all determined by all these mentioned specifics of a certain terrain which we all together define as a climate of the area. And then these climate, the, the climate specifics will determine whether an area is tundra or taiga or grassland and so on. But it, all of it is done in a search for patterns of plants and animal life uh, so we can determine the specific biodiversities in a matter of uh, climate which we call biomes and this is something we will talk about in a one specific presentation made only for biomes but here you can see uh, the different climate patterns I mentioned before, so this would be like a generalized map of Earth's current and climate zones. And what it shows uh, that the major contribution of uh, determining the climate in the area is played by ocean currents and drifts and upwelling areas. Uh, upwelling areas are areas where currents bring nutrients from the ocean bottom to the surface. So the they are rich in nutrients and they are rich directly by all types of, of life. Next to them, winds play an important role in distributing heat and moisture in the atmosphere. And then this leads to such climate zones as shown on this map. Next to this, winds also cause currents that help distribute heat through the, through the oceans and back the, to the cycle, oceans are influencing the conditions on the land in a matter of temperature and solar availability due to moisture in air or clouds and, and so on. This is how it looks like. So different climate zones are basically different surrounding conditions that will influence this development of different uh, life, different assemblage of plants and animals and other beyond that specific area. Uh, this is a link with a nice interactive map where you can click on, on any part of the world and it will show you the temperature of the area, climate zone it is in and all the major characteristics of that specific climate zone. This is what I mentioned before, so biomes, we'll talk about it in more detail in some of the next presentations. But this is directly connected to climate conditions. So different climate, in different climate, different biomes will be developed, assemblage of plants and then assemblage of animals that will inhabit that area. The main ones are grasslands, forests and deserts, dependent on the climate. So we recognize grasslands, forests and deserts, all of them having also some types of it. Each biome contains many ecosystems whose communities have adapted to different of uh, an area, so different in climate and soil and other environmental factors. But in reality, biomes are not so uniform, so they consist of a mosaic of patches and each we have uh, somewhat different biological communities, but with similar typical. Also, an important thing to mention is that a climate vary with latitude and, and elevation. What this means? This is um, a graph we're drawing showing this nicely and easy to understand. So you have different biological communities dependent on the latitude and elevation of the area so you can see here 
if you're going up, of course, you know, the temperature is lower. So you have tropical forests and then deciduous forests, coniferous forests, and so on. If you go from oceans towards the inland, you will have uh, tropical forests changed by deciduous forests, and they will be changed by coniferous forests. Now, in more detail about every type of the three main biomes you mentioned before, so at the beginning, they're gra- grasslands, and they're usually localized in the interior of the continent. Like for them and all the other three groups, they have three main types. So they could be tem- uh, tropical, temperate, or cold. So as an example for the tropical grassland, we here have savanna. Is um, a bird containing widely scattered uh, clumps of trees such as acacia, and those are trees with thorns that will help them keep herbivores away. Uh, these biomes usually have warm temperatures year round and altering dry and wet seasons. This is the graph showing you will have this kind of graph for each type of a biome. Line, red line is showing the average year temperature, and this the, the blue areas are showing the amount of precipitation per month. Then the next one we have uh, temperate grassland. Temperate grassland, grassland winters are bitter. Summers are hot and dry and the annual precipitation is very sparse and falls unevenly through the year uh, because the above ground parts of most of the grasses die and decompose each year. Then the organic matter accumulates and to produce a deep and fertile soil as you can see. The precipitation is uneven and temperature are are also divided in seasons so you have really cool winters lower than a freezing point and then the summers are almost 30 degrees and the precipitation is really uneven. And then we have called the gra- grassland and they lie in south of the Arctic uh, polar ice cap. During most of the year these treeless plan- plains are Federally cold, and um, the wind that blows is really cold, and the, it is all covered by ice and snow. Winters are long and dark, and scant precipitation falls mostly as snow. And then under the snow, these biomes are carpeted with a thick and spongy mat of low growing plants, primarily grasses, mosses, leeches, and dwarfs, shrubs, all those kind of. Um, Plants that are really developed to fight below the freezing point temperature. The next type of biome are forests, and they are opposite from the previous ones, are dominated by trees. The same like the, all the previous ones, this biome also is consisting of three main types, so tropical, temperate, and cold. As for the tropical example would be a rainforest, the temperate would be the evergreen forest and the cold would be coastal coniferous forest. Picture and the graph for tropical rainforest. They are found near the equator and they are very hot and moisture. The problem with the air is it's really moisture laden and it rises and dumps. It's moisture through the year. As you can see precipitation in the graph is really high. The the temperature is usually unchangeable, it's really static, and it's around 30 degrees while the humidity is really high for the most of the year. Then we talk about temperate deciduous forests, and they grow in areas in moderate average temperatures that change significantly with the season, which means they do have like four seasons summer, winter, spring, and autumn. These areas have long and warm summers, but then cold and not too severe winters. Still, you can definitely feel the change of the season. Here it's shown pretty well how the temperature varies through the year to serve different seasons of the year, and the precipitation varies as well with the temperature. Then we have northern evergreen coniferous forest. They are growing usually in the taller areas like higher mountains. Coastal coniferous forests are also called a temperate rainforest. 
are found in scattered coastal temperate areas uh, that have ample the rainfall or moisture from dense ocean fogs. And they, for example, they can be found in North America and Canada area. As you can see, the precipitation is not so big, even though they are under influence of the ocean masses they are surrounded with. And the temperature also varies through the year, even though it never reaches really high levels. And now, last but not the least, type of a biome would be a desert. As you all know, desert has low rainfall and different average temperatures. They can be really different in the climates they are situated in, but these conditions are similar for all of them, so there is not raining a lot and the rain is not really present. You know, we have tropical temperate and cold, so most known are Sahara and then Mojave for temperate and Gobi Desert for the cold type of a desert. Here first will be Sahara as a representative of a tropical type of desert. The tropical deserts are hot and dry most of the year and they have few plants and a hard wind blow surface, uh, some rocks and, and sand, uh, and they are, these deserts are the most famous ones, like the ones we see in the movies, but the thing is, there are really different types of the desert, like this one, Mojave Desert. Mojave Desert is a representative of temperate desert. The daytime temperatures in these areas are high in summer and low in winter. And there is more precipitation than in tropical deserts, as you could see, the blue surfaces are growing. So here you see the temperature and the, just a, a wee bit of blue area representing the rainfall. But then here you can clearly see the, the temperatures are decreasing and the blue areas are increasing. Dispersed vegetation in these areas consists mostly of widely dispersed drought resistant scrubs and kati or their succulent adaptations to the lack of water and the temperature variation. So, as we mentioned in the previous block of lectures, how plants adapt to the specifics of the surroundings, cactuses are a fantastic way of showing that. And then the most specific ones, probably the least known, cold deserts. As you can see, cold deserts differ a lot from the previous ones. The amount of water that is available in that area is really strict for the certain part of the year. And then change in temperature is more present than in the other desert types. Cold deserts vegetation is sparse and the Winters are cold and summers are warm or hot and precipitation is low, but still it is present and available in a certain part of the year. It is important to mention that desert ecosystems are really fragile. Their soils take diseases of hundreds of years to recover from disturbances um, such as off-road vehicles like in Africa, which is popular with tourists. And this is because of their slow plant growth, low species diversity, slow nutrient cycle, and lack of water. The problem is uh, the low bacterial activity in the soil, so everything is slowing down. The desert biomes are not thriving, they're just basically trying to survive, so everything is slow and developing slower and smaller and more simpler than in the other biomes. That's why they are so fragile. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for sharing this presentation with me and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.